So in the previous video, we saw how to integrate API Gateway into our microservices project. In this video, we are going to secure our API Gateway uh, using a auth server called as Keycloak. So without any further delay, let's start the video. So now let's understand what is Keycloak. Keycloak is an open source identity and access management solution we can use to secure our Java applications. So it has the ability to add authentication to applications and microservices with minimum effort. Keycloak provides many different features like single sign-on and uh, user federation, uh, identity brokering and social login. So using Keycloak, you can automatically uh, implement the functionalities like sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook and other social networks. So it has uh, uh, support for a wide range of uh, protocols like OpenID Connect, OAuth2 and SAML. So we'll be using mainly Keycloak to um, secure our API gateway, as I mentioned before. So if you want to learn more about Keycloak, what is Keycloak, what is OAuth2, and what is all this OAuth2 and OIDC uh, terminologies, you can refer to my uh, Spring Boot 3 Keycloak OAuth2 tutorial with Spring Security on my YouTube channel. It is like nearly one hour long, and I've, uh, I've covered everything in depth in this tutorial. So make sure to watch this tutorial before going ahead and uh, go, going ahead with this video because then you will be ready to implement the security for our microservices project. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and implement Keycloak in our project. All right, so now I'm, I'm inside the API Gateway project and the first thing we are going to do is to download Keycloak. So for that, we are going to use Docker Compose uh, and a Docker to download Keycloak as we did for all other software in the previous parts. So I'm going to right click on the root project and going to click on click create a new file called as docker-compose.yaml and in here first uh, I'm going to add the version as 3.8. I'm going to add services here. So first of all, we need to have two services here. The first one is Keycloak of course, we need Keycloak. And the second one is Keycloak usually needs a database as to store all the metadata, uh, which uh, is created by Keycloak. So for that, we need to use MySQL as the backing database for Keycloak. So let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do now is to get all this configuration. I'm going to make use of the written tutorial here. You will find the link to the written tutorial in the description section. So here I'm going to scroll down until I find the section download Keycloak and you can just copy the whole Docker Compose file from here and go back to IntelliJ and just paste this inside the Docker Compose file we just created. So here first we have the Keycloak uh, configuration for Keycloak container. So the container name is Keycloak and the image we are using is for the Keycloak version 24.0.1 and the start startup command we are using is uh, we are using the start dev command to start Keycloak in uh, the dev environment and uh, we also have the import realm uh, argument which is passed to the start command uh, you will you will understand about this flag and command uh, shortly um, so next we have the environment where we are providing the DB vendor environment variable as MySQL. And we also have some metadata about the MySQL database, like the database name, username, password. And we also have uh, an environment variable called as Keycloak underscore admin, where we provide the admin name and also the admin password. We provide it to the Keycloak underscore admin underscore password. So we have to note both these admin username and password because we need this to when we we need this when we start up the container and we want to log into Keycloak we need these uh, username and password. So the next we have uh, the ports uh, section where we are configuring Keycloak to run on port 8080. But as port port 8080 is already taken by the product service. We will be uh, mapping the local port 8181 from the Docker container. So you can access the key clock on the port 8181. And finally, we have the volumes uh, uh, section here. I will come back to this section. I will explain it later once I explain all the concepts about uh, key clock. And of course, uh, lastly, we have the depends on section where we, uh, where we configure that this key clock 
uh, container depends on the key cloak MySQL container. So here we have the normal uh, MySQL configuration of uh, using the image name MySQL with uh, version 8. We also defined a volume similar to how we defined for order service and as well as the inventory service. And finally, we have our environment variables where we have defined the MySQL database name, username, password, and also uh, the root password. So now let's open the terminal and run docker compose command. So I'm going to run docker compose up minus D. So as I already have these two uh, containers, Docker images uh, on my local registry, the key Docker has uh, simply started running these two Docker containers. So if you're running this for the first time, of course, it will take some time to download the images from the Docker registry. And after that, you will see that the two containers will be in the state running. So now let's go back to the browser and open the URL localhost 8181. So here you can see the localhost 8181. You can see a login page for Keycloak. So here we have the username and password form. So I'm going to provide the username as admin and also password as admin, as we saw before. I'm going to click on sign in. Okay, I'm going to click on close. And here you have the homepage of uh, the Keycloak dashboard. And uh, here to the left side, we have a drop down where it says key cloak. So just click on this drop down. And here you can see the existing realms. Uh, you can have the option to create a realm. Uh, realm is nothing but a container where you can have a set of users, clients, roles, and all the users uh, all configured inside one place. So that if you have one project, usually you create one realm and create all the related clients, users, and credentials inside this realm. And these realms are usually uh, isolated and uh, from each other. So if if you have two different applications, you can create two different realms and the users and clients which are created in one realm cannot um, cannot access the other users or other clients uh, created with another realm. So again, all these uh, concepts, I have explained this in detail in my in my Keycloak uh, tutorial. So just um, just refer to that tutorial. And uh, so now let's continue with our Keycloak configuration. So here I'm going to provide the realm name as Spring Microservices Security Realm. And I'm going to click on create. So you can see the message realm is created successfully. And here you can have, you see that we have various options. We have the options to create two for the clients. So, so these are the clients which are created by default by Keycloak. And here we are mainly interested to create a new client to access uh, our API gateway. So I'm going to click on create client and here I'm going to provide the client ID as spring client credentials ID, something like this. You can of course provide whatever ID you like. So I'm going to click on next. And in, in this page, what we have to do is we have to select the client authentication option as on. So you also have one uh, one info message here. It says that this defines the type of the OIDC client. When it's on, the OIDC type is set to confidential access type. When it's off, it is set to public access type. Basically, we want to access the API gateway through a Postman client or maybe a REST client. So we don't we won't be accessing the API gateway through the web browser in this tutorial. So as we'll be accessing using a standalone REST client, so we have to add the client authentication option as on. And after that, the authentication flow, we have to select the service account stroll option and we don't need the other two options because again the standard flow is used whenever you are uh, using the authentication where you are authenticating from the browser and the direct access grants is also not needed because by using this direct access grant you can basically uh, authenticate using a username and password we don't so we also don't want that we will be mainly using client credentials to authorize our client so for that we need the service account roles option so that's why i created this option now let's click on next and and uh, also this, we don't need to provide any information. This is optional. Finally, let's click on save. And you can see that the client is created successfully. And uh, next thing we are going to do is we have to note the credentials which are going to be created, which are created for us automatically. So I'm going to click on the credentials tab. And here you can see that the client authenticator is defined as client ID and secret. And the client secret is automatically generated for us. So if we click on this view button, you can see this is the client secret which was generated generated for us automatically. I'm going to click on this option to copy the client secret to the clipboard. If you like, you can also regenerate the client secret. 
So this is one option you have. So the next thing we are going to do is we want to configure key cloak in our project. So for that, I'm going to click on this realm setting options. And uh, here you can see all the settings uh, for a given realm. And here I'm going to click on the open ID configuration endpoint where this will open the uh, page of the auth to auth to configuration. You have the options like issuer, your issuer, issuer URL, token endpoint, introspection endpoint, user info endpoint. So we also need this uh, URL later. So we'll come back to that. For now, let's go back to the IntelliJ idea and let's configure key cloak in our project. So for that, I'm going to open the pom.xml file. And in here, I'm going to first add a dependency inside the API gateway. Basically, we to enable OAuth 2 in our uh, API gateway, we have two options. We can configure our API gateway as a, an OAuth 2 client or maybe an auth to resource server. So as we will be communicating with the API gateway only through a standalone REST client without any browser, we'll be using API gateway as a resource server, but not an auth to client. So for that, uh, I'm going to add a dependency called as Spring Security auth to resource server and the group ID is going to be org spring framework dot security. So to download this dependency, click on the Maven icon to the top right corner. And once this dependency is downloaded, uh, is downloaded successfully, let's open the application dot properties file under the source main resources. And in here, I'm going to add a property called as spring security auth2 resource server dot jwt dot issuer uri. And in here, we have to provide the issuer uri for uh, the key cloak realm we have created before. So let's go back to the key cloak configuration we have opened before. So here you can see that we have the issuer uri localhost 8181 realms spring microservices security realm. So I'm going to copy this particular URL and go back to my project and I'm going to paste this issuer URI inside the application.properties file. The next thing we are going to do is to, we also need to add some security configuration. So let's uh, expand the Java package and under the gateway package, I'm going to right click and going to create a new class under the package called as config. I'm going to call this config dot security config and I'm going to add the configuration annotation on top of the security config class. And in here, I'm going to add a bean uh, and I'm going to call this public security filter chain and the security filter chain is going to be taking a parameter of type HTTP security. Okay, looks like we don't have the HTTP security class. So that means we did a mistake in the importing the dependency. So let's go back. So basically we have defined the artifact ID for spring security or to resource server. So this, uh, this is incorrect. So what we need really need is spring boot starter or to resource server and the group ID is going to be org spring framework dot boot. And now let's click on this Maven icon again. And once this dependency is downloaded, let's go back to our security config. And now the let's type out HTTP security. Okay, now we have HTTP security. And yeah, now the error is gone. That's good. So what we have to do here is inside the security filter chain method, I'm going to first initialize this uh, security configuration. So I'm going to type in HTTP security dot authorize HTTP requests. And inside the authorize HTTP request method, I'm going to call uh, a Lambda called as authorize dot any request dot authenticated. And after that, I'm going to type dot auth to resource server. This is going to be auth2. And let's define another Lambda called as auth 2jwt And in this, inside this JWT, I'm going to add this customizer dot with defaults option. And let's add the build method to actually uh, take all this configuration and build a HTTP security filter chain uh, and build a security filter chain object. And let's uh, finally add a return statement here to this method. And of course, uh, this authorized HTTP request is actually throwing uh, an exception. So for that, we need to add the exception to the method signature. Let's do that. So once this is done, we have configured our API gateway with Spring Security and also as a resource server. So now all we have to do is we have to go to the API gateway application and start 
the application in debug mode and you can see that the application is has started up successfully on the port 9000 now it's time to call our api gateway make sure that you also have the product service order service and the inventory service up and running now let's open the postman client and here we have the request to localhost 9000 slash api slash product to call the get product endpoint so now if I try to call the get product endpoint without any authentication or authorization information. So if I click on send, you can see that we are getting a 401 unauthorized exception here, which is good. That means our gateway is working correctly. So now what we have to do is we have to first get a token from our auth server and then use the token to call use the token as a bearer token to call our API gateway, right? So for that, I uh, have to uh, request uh, the access token first of all so for that I'm going to click on the authorization tab and in the type I'm going to select the type as OAuth 2.0 so if I just scroll down here you can see that we can configure a new token so the grant type is going to be client credentials and here we have to provide the access token URL you can get this access token URL by going back to the browser to the page we have opened before from the keycloak realm settings here you can see the token endpoint URL so I'm going to click on this endpoint and I'm going to call, copy the URL and I'm going to paste it here. So we also need the client ID and client secret. So we have to go back for that to the Keycloak portal and I'm going to click on the clients option here and I'm going to go to the client which I've created. It's going to be Spring Client Credentials ID. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here inside Postman. Let's go back and also copy the client secret by clicking on this copy to clipboard button. I'm going to paste it here. And finally, we leave all the options as the default. And let's come back here. Let's scroll down and you click, click on the get new access token button. And you can see that the authentication is completed. And now uh, if we click on proceed, you can see the token which was uh, sent as a response from the authorization server. Here you can see that we got an access token uh, token type is bearer token so the expiration type time for this token is 300 seconds and uh, we also have an id token if we want to have uh, information about the user we can use the id token and we also have some other metadata of this token so you can use the option so let's click on the option use token and now you can see that the token will be added to the bearer uh, to the authorization header automatically so if i now click on send you can see that our app, our request has reached api gateway and now api gateway has routed our request to the product service and uh, is showing us the response so let's also see the do the same thing for the submit order endpoint so i'm going to click on the submit order endpoint here and i'm going to do the same thing here, I'm going to select the type as OAuth2. So here you see that the token we have created before is automatically populated here. So that we don't need to uh, request another token. So I'm going to click on option send here. You can see that we got the response order placed successfully. In case if the, the token is expired for you, you can just come scroll down here and click on get new access token and you can then use this token. So now let's delete the first token we have um, requested so now let's click on this option use token and click on send and you can see that we received the um, response order place successfully so in this way you can implement security for our api gateway um, using keycloak uh, so that's it for this uh, tutorial in the next tutorial we will uh, see how to implement resiliency in our project by using uh, resilience 4j and spring cloud circuit breaker project so I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies.